Today we're taking a look inside an NPF550 battery. It's a Sony battery pack made for cameras, uh, video cameras rather than portable cameras. And I've replaced the small battery pack that comes with my camera, the Alpha 5000 unit that I use for, for filming these videos with the larger video camera external battery so it also helps on heat dissipation which this thing has a problem with. I make it work with a little add-on pack that I forgot to mention during the video. This works pretty well. It's just a cheap one I found searching for the model number CBFW50 adapter on eBay or Amazon or AliExpress. You can find it on any of those platforms. And it's, uh, it's well worth getting if you're using one of these stationary for video. Also, I uh, did a fire test on the packaging on this. It didn't fare so well. This wasn't fire resistant as all as it turned out. And uh, here's the adapter I use for that. So let's take a look inside this battery pack, see what it is. And uh, if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe down below, give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Hi, welcome back to the workbench. So today I just killed the battery on my usual camera, the Alpha 5000, and I noticed that uh, I need a new battery. So I wired this one up quick, uh, just shot some cables on there with some solder. And I assumed it would start working, but I noticed something kind of weird on here. So if you'll watch as I measure the voltage on this, it's a uh, 7.4 volt lithium cell, nominally charged 8 volts, and when I check the check the leads, it's uh, showing 2.078, which is a very strange voltage to be getting. And actually, that's checking out weird too. So I don't know what's going on here. It was actually working fine. It charged up, it discharged. I checked it with a little uh, set I have up for doing RC cars. They don't use it for that, but it works just fine for charging dual cell batteries. But uh, as soon as I hooked this up, it just failed, although it tested out just fine. So I was going to pop it open and see what on earth is inside this battery pack and uh, why it's not working. Uh, hopefully it's just two 18650-ish, maybe shorter, cells that I can just scrape out of here and get working again. Maybe put some protection circuitry on them. So, let's see what's in the battery pack. And there's our battery cleaned off. It was actually two 18650 cells sitting in a tray, uh, like so, with a probably temperature sensor bar sticking out over on the top here. Assuming that's what that is since it's not a balancing connector. There is actually a balancing connector in here and it's going up to the HM8202 controller board for uh, charging and safety. And that's got a lot of supporting electronics on it so that's probably pretty well built. Uh, yeah. Probably all just for the HM8202. I don't see anything else funky on there, but that's a nice little control circuit. It looks like it's well made. And I think I figured out the problem with the cells here. Let me show you. And here's the thing. So I had a bunch of people asking if, you know, how to, how to fix lithium ion battery cells, and you, you can't. They're just, once they're chemically ruined because the uh, anodes and the cathodes are just no longer doing their thing and properly rearranging themselves when charged, that the battery's just dead. There's no there's no fix for a dead lithium ion cell. Uh, in very rare cases, if you have the right equipment, you can uh, push a charge through to the cell if it's not responding anymore, and then it'll start working again just because the cell wasn't, you know, wasn't damaged. It was just inert. But that's, that's usually a state that also destroys the chemistry of the battery. So in most cases, uh, you know, unless you have the right equipment to do it, it's not really worth doing it. You just get a properly working battery cell and, you know, uh, dispose of the old cell properly. Normally uh, a far better bet. But if you take a look at the meter, one of these cells is coming up at 4031. That cell's probably okay given how it was charging the pack. And then this cell... It's now coming up at 4027. All right, so something was funky with the electronics on this. Let me pull these cells apart quick and see what's going on here. There we go. Left the cells tabbed so we can see if my soldering on the 
uh, just the little leads going into it, nowhere near the actual batteries themselves really, just the leads that connected over to the circuit board that then connected to the batteries, so pretty well removed as a heat source from the batteries themselves. Uh, did some did some problematic desoldering somewhere else on the system. All right, let's check this out. So one of the cells is testing at 4031, so possibly good. And the other cell is testing at 4027. So now that they're outside of this pack and off of this yeah, safety and charge circuit, they're actually working okay. So I don't know what was going on there. That something might have gone wrong in here when I um, soldered some leads to these little connectors. These little uh, barrel jacks that were internal on this battery. I soldered a lead internally to them. Maybe one of these came decoupled slightly. Although why it would then put uh, why it would then put two volts on it, I, I don't know. This charge circuit actually looks fairly normal. I looked up the chip on it, the HM8202. That's fairly standard. And that does look like its build quality is okay. Uh, this hasn't actually seen any use. I don't think I ever used these. I, I'd used them to test out some equipment I got in briefly. Uh, and that's that was it. So they were pretty much just sitting on the shelf since then. And this one, at least, I remember to keep charged a little bit. So it seemed like it was in okay condition when I took it off the shelf to use with the camera. But, uh, yeah, it wasn't actually working. Ah, one other thing we can take a look at on here. So I'm curious if they use the flame-resistant plastics on here because this stuff seems a little... Eh, I don't know if it's just really cheap, thin ABS or it's flame resistant. Let's take a quick look at that. Yeah, no, that'll, that'll stay on fire if it gets lit, so. Uh, something else to be aware of. This is just standard ABS plastic on the cheap battery packs. <clears throat> so don't uh, don't get them near flame or you'll be having a bad day with your lithium ions. Let me bring them back onto the circuit. I will solder this back up quick and we'll see if these return to life. One second. And back. That was a little more involved than I thought, but I have got everything hooked back up again. The ground and this hot lead to over to the battery. The battery itself is soldered back up with the tabs and everything's put back on properly on the charge and battery control circuit with uh, with good results. So uh, there's the battery uh, charge lead for the cells so it can determine uh, which cell is glow if any of them are. And uh, here we go. So before it was reading two volts on one of the cells and now if I check it Tip positive, and 8.07. So I don't know exactly what was wrong, but there was something definitely wrong in the circuitry, and that's a bad situation to be in for a cell. So that's uh, the other reason I was checking this out. I I couldn't actually just leave it sitting there with one of the cells showing uh, wacky voltages because who knows what the actual problem is. So that's in my opinion, a very bad situation and could result in, you know, fire and whatnot. So not uh, not something I can just leave lying around on the workbench. And there we go. Everything seems to be in good working order on here. The cells are working now. I kept on taped it up temporarily just to make sure that nothing gets shorted. And now I'll go through and actually make a case for this thing or find a case for it in the workshop, whichever the case may be, and uh, get it back up and working. So there's the inside of a, uh, let's see what this one was. I don't know what it was. I'll have to go back and look at the beginning of the video and then just go insert it here. It's the, anyway, it's the Sony, a, well, clone of a Sony charge circuit. The batteries seem just fine. And uh, the circuitry on the control circuit seems okay. Now that it's charging, let's see if it runs the uh, breakout on my battery pack for the camera. And action. 
Hey, all right. Back in business. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Hopefully, on a better camera.